And another thing, I have got to get these clamps disassembled. This is the only walkway I have over here through my shop. And these clamps are probably four feet high sticking up. And I keep thinking I'm past them and I stand up and I take a big chunk out of the top of my head. I'm missing a bunch of hair. And here it is, a week later, my flip top tool cart. It works great, I love it, it is complete. Is it a sander? Oh, no, or is it a planer? Is it a sander or a planer? But as much as I love it and it works great, it was not without its problems. Spoiler alert, uh, there will be a video out on this, but there was a an epic failure. In fact, I had two epic failures this week in the shop. The first one was this tool cart. When I make something that I've made before and I've made several of these flip top tool carts, I get bored a bit and I want to challenge myself with some new dimension to it. Additionally, if there's other folks who have made this type of a video or this type of product in the video, I want to offer something new to the viewers, something different. So I challenged myself with a hidden hinge system, a hidden flip system here that you can't see from the outside. It's hidden on the, on the inside here. But the first version of that failed horrifically with 150 pounds of tools loaded up in it the first time I went to go to flip it. It wasn't good. Luckily, these two tools are quite beefy and built quite well. So even when the thing failed and they, they dropped a good foot, uh, at a fairly high rate of speed, or two feet, I guess, down to the concrete floor here. They both survived. The second epic fail was the mystery project. The top of it, which I, we will rewind to in a few minutes, you'll see the making of that. There was a horrible failure on that. But before we rewind back to that, I want to take a few minutes and answer some Instagram questions, some viewer questions that come in through direct message on Instagram. And for those of you who don't have my Instagram info, look down there in the description section. All of my social media info is down there. You can direct message me or just post right your comments or questions right in the video here in YouTube. Either way works fine for me. I always respond. So I have a question. This one's pretty straightforward. Your favorite tool in the shop, go. My favorite tool in my shop is this table saw, which has treated me extremely well for the last 12 or 15 years, save for one near-death experience. It is a Delta unit saw, and again, mine is probably 12, 15 years old. And if you are old enough and lucky enough to have had shop class in high school, you probably use something like this. It is a cabinet saw. The whole base of it is in a enclosed cabinet as opposed to an open stand. Everything about it is big and beefy and industrial. The cast iron top and the cast iron wings make it extremely heavy and extremely stable. Additionally, in a cabinet saw, the trunnion, the big heavy duty cast iron guts in here that allow that hold the saw blade, allow it to tilt and raise up and down is, is attached to the cabinet, not to the top here. Which means that once it's kind of put together and tuned up, it stays in adjustment. It's extremely reliable. This Biesmeyer fence, Biesmeyer, I don't even know what it's called. I don't really care. It is extremely accurate and dependable. I just set it where on the width I want to cut. I can be darn sure that that's the width that it's going to cut. It is a left tilt saw, which means the blade tilts away from the fence so we don't pinch wood in between here when we're cutting on an angle. I love the giant shutoff that I can just hit with my thigh while my hands are using the table saw to shut the table saw off. And since the Unisaw hasn't really changed much since it was first released in the late 40s or 50s, parts are readily available and they will probably always be readily available, at least for the foreseeable future. 
Additionally, you can extend the usability, accuracy, etc., of your saw with accessories. And because they have been so popular over the years, just about every accessory you can think of has a version made for the Unisaw. Okay, folks, let's get back to that mystery project. I've got three pieces of MDF here, two feet by two feet on each of them. They are three quarter inch thick. That is medium dem density fiberboard, which is a uh, like a wood and glue mixed together product you can find at the big box home stores here in the US. Fairly cheap stuff. You saw me use this in the um, in the cart for the, uh, in the in the mobile base for the planer. Joinder, not the planer, the joinder. I think I even got that backwards in that video. Anyway, one of these is going to be the base for our form. We're gonna create a form out of these three things to make the top. This bottom, this one will be just covered with tape and that will form the bottom of our base. Two more, we're gonna cut a circle out of and stack those and that's gonna be part of our form. To do that, I have made a trammel just a piece of wood that i have screwed to the bottom of my router base and it obviously has a hole in it for my router bit to come out the other end of it i will screw into the mdf somewhere along here that so that i can spin it and make a circle the blade that i'm going to use is a spiral upcut bit looks very similar very it looks very similar to a drill bit other than it's not pointed at one end and these the spirals here are extremely sharp right they can not only cut going down but they can cut on the side right so that as we go around the circle they will cut that circle out i'm going to get this mounted up here all right did not video making this trammel because it is a literally an end-to-end -end, about a three minute job on the bandsaw just not particularly exciting and it's a pretty crappy one i mean it's going to work great for what i'm doing but it's not adjustable the funny thing is probably in like 10 years you're going to see me in a video i'm going to still have this crappy trammel i will not have replaced it yet hey chris i thought you were going to make a new trammel on a video someday yeah, I was, but that crappy trammel just works, and yeah, you know. Okay, important thing when you're doing this, you need a router that is a plunge router. So a lot of routers don't go up and down. You, you fix them to the depth you want it to be at before you start working, and that's the depth that it's at. Plunge router, I can move its depth while I'm working and lock it into place. So I'm gonna take this in probably quarter inch cuts. I will go around in a quarter inch, push it, plunge it a little bit further and push it around again. Before I do that, I wanna take two of these sheets, I'm gonna screw them together. I'm gonna to do them both at once. I'm gonna find the center here and I will drill a little hole for my screw to go in that center, my pivot point. And I will also drill a hole in the trammel here at the, radius that I want it to be and then we'll get cutting so bear with me for a second here I laid the two slices of logs over the MDF forms with the circles cut out and adjusted them for the best appearance. 
Then I laid the cutout circle over the top of them and traced it so I could head over to the bandsaw to cut along those lines. For those of you who missed the first two videos in the series, I'm making a mystery project from some old logs I had laying around. During the milling process, I found a few that were pretty badly eaten by termites and he decided to use those with epoxy to make up a tabletop. Okay folks, we are ready to mix in our resin. We will pour the two parts resin to one part hardener. Mix it up, let it sit for 15 minutes. We'll also put in our onyx color and then we'll pour it in all the voids. So I've spread a little silicone caulk where the sides meet the base. And you might also notice that I added one more tier to the, um, the outer circle here. So I've actually got two and a quarter inches and we are now ready to pour the resin. Let's go. This will help get some of the bubbles out. And this is where the trouble starts. In this shot, you can see that the epoxy is starting to leak ever so slightly, just a drip here and there between the layers of MDF. So I thought I could put caulk around the outside and seal it up, but uh, well, I was wrong. So at this point, you can see that I put in more epoxy here. I wish I would have had the camera on during the night when I came out here to pour on the final coats and I realized I didn't seal between the sandwiched layers very well and my three liters of epoxy, I would say two liters were basically all over my bench and my floor and my carpeting in here. It's not expensive carpeting, it's a shop, but I was a little bit upset, but more than anything, I was just hysterically laughing at the incredible mess that this epoxy had made everywhere and how the hell was I gonna clean it up. I managed to do it. I actually waited about six hours till the morning and then I went, it was semi-hardened, it was really goopy. So I was able to scrap, scrape it off just about everything except for the, the carpeting. There's some carpeting down here that is forever epoxied to my wooden subfloor, if you will. In hindsight, I should have caulked in between each of these layers before I sandwiched it. After I found it leaking all over, I put caulk around the entire outside at the seams, which seems to have done the trick. Waited for that to dry before I put in the final uh, three or four, probably four liters of epoxy. And again, that's gotta harden. We'll take it all down, we'll expose more of the wood, sand it, be ready to go. But since this has quite some time to go before it dries, I'm gonna wrap up for this week. We'll come back next week and start processing. I appreciate so much everyone who's taken the time out to view this new little funny vlog segment that I have, which again has been done in response to viewers for asking for more content during these times. So for now, folks, stay safe out there. Take care of one another. Take care of yourselves. This is Chris Schmidt signing out from Key West.